Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're going to look at the reports in Genesis. So I want you to have your recipe open on screen. And then to get to the reports, we click the report tab. The first one we're going to look at is the spreadsheet report. It shows all of the values for all of the displayed nutrients and it indicates any missing values. Uh, nutrients are displayed horizontally by ingredient with the totals at the bottom of the list. You'll probably have to use the scroll bar to see all the nutrients. The next one we're going to look at is the spreadsheet label rounded report. It's basically the same as the spreadsheet, but the label rounding rules are applied. You have a couple of configuration options here. So I'll check the percent daily value options and you can see that that has changed. Next one we're going to look at is the multi-column report. It provides a good overall nutrient data summary of the recipe. The information is displayed in several columns and you can change the number here. You can also show both the per serving amount and the per 100 grams amount of each nutrient. Now this one is the single nutrient report. The single nutrient report shows what percentage of a specific nutrient each ingredient contributes to the recipe. Right now I'm looking at sodium and I can see that the whipped cream contributes the highest amount of sodium. If I select protein, I'll see that it's the walnuts. And then if I select carbohydrates, it's the pears. Now we're going to look at the bar graph report. If you have not previously selected a recommendations profile, it's going to ask you for one here. The bar graph shows the total nutrients, total nutrient amounts, and then it represents graphically the uh, percentage met. You can also show the uh, recommended amounts and percent recommendation met. This is the calorie and fats pie chart. It's useful for quickly seeing the calorie and fat breakdown of your recipe. The source of calories window here shows graphically the percentage of calories from protein, carbohydrates, fats, and alcohol. And then the source of fat window shows the breakdown of fat. The calorie, calories and fats bar graph, same thing, but shown as a bar graph. Um, now the MyPlate report will show the recommended intake versus the actual intake per the MyPlate parameters. Okay, then this is the spec sheet report. It is generated for use as a basic supplier spec sheet, as if this recipe were an ingredient. The nutrient data is automatically populated from the total nutrient data for your recipe, which is calculated from the ingredients. Some of the fields are editable, like the date field, the comment field, the signature date, and you can upload an image signature file if you want as well. And the nutrients per 100 grams field, if you were to change that amount, then the report would automatically recalculate the nutrient amounts. Okay, the next set of reports we're going to look at are primarily designed for printing. They're static and you can't change the fonts or positioning or color. This first one here is a dairy density report. It'll show the density of, say, ice cream or some other dairy formulation based on the industry formula. Choosing dairy density from the reports menu will tell the program to calculate and display the density of the current recipe using the amount of total fat and water. Okay, this is the label display standard one. It shows the label, the nutrition facts panel with its ingredient statement, allergen statement, and notes. The label display standard two is a similar report just arranged a little bit differently. And then the tabular one is for use with tabular labels. This is a recipe card with multi-column and it shows the recipe with the nutrient breakdown as a multi-column report. Now the last one we're gonna look at here is the protein quality report. The program can calculate the amino acid score of your recipe, which is determined by comparing the lowest level essential amino acid in your recipe to the essential amino acid standard, the government standard that's been established. So if you get a score of 100 or above, then you have a complete or high quality protein. But a score below 100 indicates a lower quality protein. Now, not all suppliers 
will report their amino acid data. So you may find that you get a better analysis, a more accurate analysis if you're using USDA sourced foods and ingredients. Um, okay, then that is the end of the reports tutorial. Thank you for joining me today.